Are you having fun so far? You've learned a lot about streaming? Well, now it's time to learn about adaptive multi-rate audio streaming. And what is it and how does it work and what are its advantages over other traditional kinds of streaming? Well, let's examine and contrast some of the networking aspects of different streaming protocols. For example, with Shoutcast and Icecast streaming, you have specific stream server technology. That is, you have to load this a Shoutcast or Icecast server onto a server platform. It's connection-based. That means that every listener has pretty much a, a full-time relationship uh, with the, the server at whatever data center it is. Each and every client uses server resources on a continuous basis, including memory, the IP stack, and CPU cycles. Plus, unfortunately, standard streaming ports are sometimes blocked by hotels, by corporate centers, by maybe the company you work for, like port 8000 or port 8888 or port 1935. These are common ports used for streaming. Also with traditional streaming like Shoutcast and Icecast, bit rates are fixed. There's no auto selection of the bit rate. The publisher, that is you, have to make links available for high and low bit rate, medium if you like, different bit rates for the listener to choose from. The listener has to select the right stream for their particular uh, environment and connection. Excess bandwidth? Well, that's not optimal quality. And insufficient bandwidth, you get stuttering audio. So you really have um, some choices to make when you're looking at Shoutcast and Icecast. That is, the listener does. The listener has got to choose these things for him or herself. So how do we maybe solve that conundrum? Well, adaptive multi-rate streaming goes a long way toward making this all work out. There are three different standards, Apple HLS, Microsoft Smooth Streaming, and MPEG Dash, Apple HLS being the most popular one right now. Adaptive multi-rate streaming is file-based streaming, not a stream, but files. Ordinary file servers, that's right, ordinary file servers distribute sequential audio files. There's no specialized software. The server is optimized to serve files and it's standard HTTP access using port 80. So it really works from everywhere. It's never blocked. And uh, like serving web page assets to people who are out there, you know, serving a, a browsing web pages. Uh, you can use an Apache server, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft IIS, any platform that just handles serving out of files, a file server. So here are the three standards again. HLS is HTTP live streaming from Apple, Microsoft Smooth Streaming, and MPEG Dash. Now it's thought that MPEG Dash will become more popular as time goes on, but for now, uh, HLS is probably the most popular thing out there, certainly supported by every iOS device that there is. Let's look at what happens here. We've got our audio processing, so our audio gets processed properly. It goes to, instead of one encoder, it may go to three, four, five, however many you choose, but typically three is, are used. Uh, three different audio codecs to encode this audio. And typically, 256 kilobits per second will be the top rate, since that represents excellent audio using AAC. But you have some lower rates like 96 kilobits per second and 48 kilobits per second. Each of these streaming encoders is encoding the exact same audio at the exact same time. And each of these is putting out mm, streams that aren't ready for the Internet, but streams that are ready to be stuffed into a file. So what happens next? Well, so these three streams at three different bit rates are now sent to a file segmenter. The file segmenter fills up files with the data from these three different bitrate streams. And the file segmenter makes absolutely sure that each file, whether it's big, medium, or small, each file contains exactly the same audio with the same stop and start points for the front and end of the file across all three bit rates. Then the file is closed when it's full of, say, five seconds worth of audio, and by FTP, it's sent off to a remote file server. So, yep, every five seconds, three files are sent across there to the file server. And this is the file server that is then exposed to the public.
At the file server, what you have is a manifest file. This is the file that ends in .m3u8. Get used to seeing that because that is a very popular file extension that's used in uh, adaptive multi-rate streaming. What happens now is that the client, that is a phone, a notebook, a tablet, a computer out there in the wild, uh, connects to the file server and connects, first of all, to the m3u8 file which again is a manifest file, it describes the location of the other bitrate files, the 256, the 96, and the 48 kilobit per second file. And then each of those files, each of those uh, folders, I should say, has its own manifest file that describes the uh, order of the files that are coming into it. And also it describes how long it should take for the client out in the field to download uh, one file. So now the client gets to decide which bitrate it's going to use. It may start out initially with the lowest bitrate, that would be the smallest file, and go ahead and grab that file quickly and start playing audio. Audio that's at a lower quality than the higher bitrates would be. And let's say that the connection is just fine, and it plays out this small file uh, just fine, and it in fact downloads the small file just lickety-split, and it figures, hey, I've got enough bandwidth to download a file at a higher bit rate. So it'll try the 96, or it may just bump right up to the 256 kilobit per second uh, file size. So the, the client is what makes the decision about which file to go and get from the server. And that's how adaptive multi-rate streaming overcomes a variety of problems. Let's take a look now at what's going on inside the, um, the file server itself. We mentioned earlier that uh, we had a manifest file, the one that ends in M3U8. And there you can see it in the file directory. It's the uh, fifth from the bottom file, wiqq-hls.m3u8. This is the file that you will actually uh, point people's uh, client to. That is, you point their phone. Your, your listen now link will go to that file. Now that file is simply a, an XML looking file with some data in there about what version it is and where the other files are, what the bit rates are that are available and where they're located. So now you can see there are also M3U8 files for other bit rates as well. In this example, I had 128 kilobit, 64 kilobit, 32 kilobit, and 16 kilobit. Each of those files describes the uh, file sequence numbers that are in the other uh, files that are in this directory. So the other files, the ones that start with seg, as in segment, uh, for example, look at the very top one, seg 16,000, so that's the bitrate, dash 00-21943.aac. Well, 21943 is the sequence number, and uh, the segment is a 16 kilobit per second uh, segment of audio. So you can see how that uh, uh, carries through all the other uh, segments. Typically, there are three files kept on the file server at any time. So there's 15 seconds worth of audio available uh, to the client, that is to the player, at any given time. So with these um, manifest files, the player has complete knowledge of what's there on the server uh, for the stream that he wants to listen to. So how does this help in the real world? Well, it's adaptive. So if you're bit rate that's available, if your available connection rate goes up and down, then your player can choose a high bit rate file, medium or low bit rate file. Perhaps another way to look at this would be over time, let's say you're on a 3G network and your available bit rate is just all over the place. Well, you can make pretty quick decisions about which file is going to be downloaded. I say you, really, it's your player that's deciding. And then you get to a LAN connection and things are a lot smoother, so you may not change bit rates very often. And then you're over on Wi-Fi, and it's not as bad as 3G, but still the speed may go up and down. So again, your player will be deciding which file size to download at any one given time. And all this is done completely smoothly because of the file segmenter. Uh, you can switch from one speed, one file size, one bit rate to another and never hear uh, any glitch happening between the files. The Zipstream X2 software and R2 hardware allows configuration of multiple stream encoders. So you can create traditional audio streams for Shoutcast or Icecast simultaneously with adaptive multi-rate streams. In our next episode, we'll actually set up an adaptive multi-rate stream encoder 
and a server, a local server, so we can listen to adaptive multi-rate streaming.